thank you so much for joining us on The Dwelling Show. I've got Andrew Kilier. I'm your host, Ola Dantes. Um, I was just reading your, your profile, Andrew. Um, really, really fascinating story, but I definitely know that you can tell your story better than I can. So can you tell our Dwell listeners a little bit more about yourself and kind of what you've been up to lately? Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Andrew Keel. Uh, I'm a manufactured housing uh, investor, and I started out uh, flipping houses and wholesaling in the central Florida area. Uh, I came across a couple of mobile homes in in my you know my marketing, and I started to research you know how I could make these profitable. Uh, I got on Google and ended up on a, a YouTube channel for a guy named Lonnie Scruggs and he wrote a book called Deals on Wheels and I ended up finding out that I could you know buy these homes you know put very little into them and then sell them you know with payments take payments monthly for you know for the purchase of the home so I did that with these two homes and then I ended up doing about 19 more of them uh, where I would buy mobile homes in other people's parks and then I would sell them on contract, and take monthly payments uh, until they were sold. And it was it created mailbox money, and it was it was a good, you know, a good little investment for me. Uh, I in the process, I networked and met a park owner, and we went out to lunch. And I was talking to him, and he told me he said, you know, owning the real estate is there's a lot more value in that, in owning the real estate that is the mobile home park instead of just owning the homes and I kind of had an aha moment and decided that I wanted to own a mobile home park and I I thought you needed to have like millions of dollars to you know buy a mobile home park and this is before that you know before I learned about raising capital or anything like that so I just kind of dove in I I went to a couple of uh, mobile home you know investing boot camps I went to the Frank and Dave MHU boot camp I went to a couple others that were like a, a two or three day little weekend event. And all the while I just started cold calling sellers, you know, cold calling owners of mobile home parks and asking them if they would be interested in selling. And uh, I found a deal uh, in Edwardsville, Illinois. It was my first acquisition and it was a 67 lot mobile home park uh, up in Illinois. Uh, I ended up contacting one of the, uh, one of the people I met at the mobile home university boot camp, and asking him, you know, I put a business plan together. I showed it to him and uh, I asked him if he would invest with me and uh, you know, long, uh, we were able to return all of the initial capital and then some uh, at the refinance point at month 18. And since then we've done four other deals together, you know, myself and that investor, we've JV'd on other deals. Uh, and since then, I've brought on other private equity partners, uh, and you know we currently have uh, 14 mobile home parks, which is about 900 lots across six states, uh, primarily in the Midwest. So it's uh, it's been an awesome journey. It's been an awesome journey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's been great. It, it's it's been awesome. Okay, so you mentioned MHU Mobile Home University and um, Frank Wolf. Um, for those who don't we don't know him, uh, he's been on the show as well. I think it was on. I think it was DS60. So anyone listening to this, you interested in mobile homes or just mobile home parks, you can always go check out that episode. Um, Frank is a great guy and we had a great chat as well. So if you want to learn more about that, you can check that out. Um, I really, really like what you were saying though. You, you know, learned about, you know, homes on wheels, then you took a course and you started buying, you know, wheels, um, homes on wheels. And then you went to lunch with this guy that had that own mobile park. And then you started buying a mobile home box. And then you network with this investor, you JV, and then you started JV. There is a there is a pattern there, right? You know, there's kind of like it's almost like, you know, uh, some people say, um, this guy, anything he touches turns to gold, right? But obviously there's a there's a gap from from touching to actually doing as well. So how do you think you're able to connect this dot from seeing an idea? and actually doing that idea because there's obviously you're doing something right. So what is that process like for you? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. Uh, I think, you know, I grew up, I was in sports and, you know, my work ethic uh, from there transferred over into my business life. And when I find something that I'm intrigued by, 
I dive in. I mean, full, full all go in and I was, I became obsessed with mobile homes and it was just by happen chance. I mean, if you would have asked me in college, you know, Hey, you know, what are you going to do when you grow up? Right. I never would have told people that I'd, you know, I'd be a trailer park, you know, owner and operator. Right. But, uh, I just became obsessed and I just, every bit of content that I could find, whether it was, you know, an, an educational seminar or an online course or a book. I mean, I, I read everything and I, I got my hands on it and just dove in. So, you know, when normal people, you know, they work 40 hours a week, I'm taking in 80 plus hours of content every week to just catch up. And I was able to, you know, take in a lot of, amount, a lot of information in a short amount of time. And uh, I think that really helped. I, I bet, I bet, you know, because there's a lot of people, you know, will listen to my show. Um, some of them I've spoken to on the phone and a lot of people are kind of, you know, looking for more of just theoretical content. It's how can I do or what this person is doing? Um, not just from a technical perspective, but from, you know, more of a mindset um, perspective. Right. So, and obviously anybody listening to this, they can just, simply go on Google and type in, you know, mobile home parks or whatever, and they would get a flood of, you know, Google, you know, returns and they can binge and watch. So I'm trying to make sure that as we get on the show, we're trying to tease out and kind of like the, the real success element as opposed to the theoretical part, as much as we'd love to do that as well. So that's kind of why I, I asked that question. So you got your first deal done, like you said, um, but before that first deal, did you find any kind of struggles in terms of getting that first deal done? Or was that kind of relatively easier for you to do? Because from buying just the actual mobile homes, right, to actually buying a, you know, a mobile home park, it's told, you know, to, so it's somewhat a big um, transition for you. So how was that journey like for you? Yeah, great question. You know, in the beginning, I, I think a lot of investors can relate to this you know, you think that the money is going to be the hardest part, raising the money for the deal. You know, I was very worried about that. And, uh, you know, going to these seminars, I learned that, hey, you know, trust the system. When you find a deal, the money will be the easiest part. And I, I literally got my first park under contract. And luckily, the seller took, you know, 5000 bucks as the escrow deposit, because that was all I had. Uh, so I didn't have the money. I didn't have like the credits to even buy this park. You know, I, I didn't have the liquidity the banks were looking for. Uh, but luckily I found the deal. It was good enough. The returns were 20% plus. So finding the money, you know, when I, I emailed that investor that I attended uh, the boot camp with, you know, I actually had a couple people that I emailed and all of them reached back out. Uh, but this investor ended up, you know, being the best fit. Uh, but the money was the easiest part. And after doing 14 different deals, I can honestly tell you that the money will be there if the deal is right. And I would tell investors to focus on finding the deal and making sure the numbers work and not worry so much about the money. You know, some people say, oh, find the money first and then go find the deal. Uh, I would argue, you know, it needs to be the opposite. Find the deal, make the numbers work, and the money will be there very, 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 very quickly. Yeah, there's definitely a diff, you know, some two school of thoughts there. And, you know, I have mine as well. So it, it's a really fascinating um, conversation to have. Um, what I was going to, I did ask Frank this as well when he was on the show. A lot of people talk about, you know, apartment buildings, multifamily, you know, but mobile home parks has this, you know, just this not so sexy appeal to it, right? Not a lot yes. of people wake up and say, hey, I want to go buy you know some mobile home parks in the midwest somewhere you know out in the country or whatever it just doesn't sound sexy keep, let's keep it that way you know <laughs> less competition <laughs> that is that yes. is really funny you said that because you know most people are kind of like you know kind of looking at apartments or you know commercial assets or even single family homes right for flip sure but you're buying this you know asset that is not kind of conventional um, exactly. Did you struggle in terms of making that kind of option to go for mobile home parks or you didn't even have that at all? And what has been your experience so far? Yeah. Uh, so there definitely is a stigma surrounding the, you know, the trailer park space or the mobile home park space. And that I think keeps, you know, some investors out of the space entirely. Uh, but what is starting to happen is, 
is there's a lot of, you know, there, there's a lot of private equity groups and, and big time investors that are chasing yields. And they're finding that in, in mobile home park space, you know, you're going to get the highest rate of return compared to any form of rental real estate. Uh, so, it, it, you know, I'll never forget this. You know, when I was, when I got that, my first deal under contract, uh, I went to a family friend that is like, he's the wealthiest guy my family knows, right? I mean, he, he coached basketball, you know, for my brothers and I when we were younger and he started a business and, you know, did really, really well. You know, he's got the Ferrari. He has the huge house on the lake. And I approached, he was like the first guy. I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to take him out to lunch and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to raise the money. He's, he's going to bring it. This will be no big deal for him. So we sat down for lunch you know, I got my suit on, you know, I, I show him my pro forma, I show him that, hey, we're going to get 20 plus percent returns. And I'll never forget what he said. He looked at me and he said, Andrew, you know, I love you, like, like you're my son, but there's no way in hell that I'm going to invest in a trailer park with you. And I was just like, you know, I couldn't, I didn't understand it. I was like, you know, I thought, I thought it was a done deal, but not everybody will be open to investing in this asset class. Uh, but that also is a good thing, right? Because it, it protects, you know, some of our yields and helps, you know, keep cap rates as high as they are. It is, it is really, really fascinating that, you know, you made that point, actually. I think Frank made a similar, um, a similar point as well. So that's really, really, that's really amazing to, to think that, you know, somebody that was so wealthy that you would just think it would go solely for the returns, right? He's it, it just, you know, thinking of how much can I get back plus some, but that, Kind of stigma like you said it's still something like maybe it was even unconscious for you know for your family friend as you said he was just thinking wow trailer parks no um i think frank also mentioned that was if um i think was it sinatra that actually lived um in a mobile elvis, uh, elvis my elvis bad elvis presley elvis. lived yeah. in a, a trailer park and you know back in the 50s you know it was the upper middle class that lived in these in, you know trailer parks and uh there's a lot of you know celebrities that used to tra travel and travel trailers and, and live in these, these mobile home parks. Fascinating. Fascinating. Okay. So, um, you're basically doing pretty well, right? Um, do you have any intentions of maybe piling that money into any other kind of asset class or is this for you? Are you just kind of looking to grow your business to the next level? What is, what is next for Andrew? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't, you know, I've looked at other apartment deals and things and I just don't see the yields being as good as they are in the mobile home park space. So I I'm sticking to my niche. You know, I, it's like a, it's like a brain surgeon. You know, I've, I've done so much research and I've, I've, I have this mobile home park business down, you know, I've lived in mobile home parks. Usually when we have an, a, you know, an, a new acquisition for the first couple of months of ownership, I move on site. You know, I bring my wife, I bring my daughter, we move on site and help oversee the rehabs. We help oversee bringing in new, new inventory. Uh, you know, when I'm doing due diligence, due diligence is very important on mobile home parks, you know, because a lot of these are older properties, the infrastructure, you know, the utility lines, those type of things can be very old. And I know what to look for now. You know, my due diligence checklist is that much bigger. It's that much more mature. So uh, I, I feel very comfortable investing in the mobile home park space, and that's where I'm going to stay. Uh, I am looking always uh, for new investors. Uh, we syndicated our first uh, portfolio of five mobile home parks last year, and it was a, a great success. And we're looking to do a couple of those every year. So uh, that's, that's what I plan on doing in the future. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I think that's a great segue to my next question. So, you know, you mentioned something um, that you were seeing more yields in mobile home parks and, you know, relative to other asset classes. So can you give us a case study from like inception to completion of a particular deal if you've gone through a full cycle yet um, of a particular deal and how did you find the deal and kind of how did you find out more with the numbers if you have it? Yeah, yeah. I actually have one on my website, uh, which is keelteam.com. It's K-E-E-L-T-E-A-M.com. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you about that first deal that I did. It was, it was the Coil Run Mobile Home Park in Edwardsville, Illinois. Uh, it was 67 lots. Uh, the initial investment was $400,000. Uh, there was recourse debt for both partners, myself and my, uh, you know, my JV partner. Uh, we closed on that on June of 2017 uh you know we infilled six homes to fill six vacant lots 
and then we rehab two homes to get it fully occupied within about three to four, four months. Uh, we raised rents, we build back for utilities. The current owner of this park was billing back for water. However, he hadn't updated the rates that the local water company was charging the park. So he was getting some back from you know, what he was being paid, what he was being charged by the local municipality, but he was losing money every year on water. So we updated those rates, build back for water. Uh, we also build back for trash and increase lot rent to, you know, to below market. So it was still a little bit below market, but we've, we've since caught up to that. Um, we were able to take a distribution in December 2018 of 85,000. Uh, and then we refinanced that uh, in April uh, of this year. And we were able to pull out 783,000, uh, just, just under 784,000 plus an additional 65,000 uh, from the cash flow at that point uh, this April. So total distributions were about 934,000, uh, paid back our initial capital, which was 400,000, and we had 533, just, just almost 534,000 in excess return uh, in 18 months. So, uh, or actually it was 21.6 months, so 1.8 years. Uh, the total return was 129.71% ROI per year. And the financing, when we did the refinance, there's an additional cash out option uh, at month uh, 12, where we can pull out an additional 112,000 because our uh, appraisal came back you know, higher than expected. So they said, if we maintain occupancy at 95% or higher, uh, we can pull out an additional 112,000 uh, at month 12. So uh, that's, that was a, a pretty great deal that we were able to secure. Uh, but you can see that the returns are are very very good. I mean, yeah, I'm actually on your website right now, so I'll I'll try to get our team to put this um, link on the show notes for uh, dwell listeners to to check it out. This is pretty amazing. Um, would you say this is kind of typical, or is this one of those kind of you know um, like a home run? This was definitely a home run. You know, I think we have a couple more of these in the works. Uh, you know, but this one we got a really great deal. It was off market direct to seller. So, uh, you know, we were able to secure it at a really good price. Um, but it, you know, it, every deal is a little bit different. There's a, a new dynamic with each deal. Absolutely. Congratulations on that deal. I love it. I'm going to take a, a second look again. Um, it's just amazing how, you know, a lot of us are just kind of stuck on our asset class. I mean, I always, you know, look at other asset classes. I like land as well. Um, so just looking at this is just really fascinating. Um, of course, I have to be, I have to be um, very acutely aware of the shiny object syndrome from kind of jumping from <laughs> asset to asset. You know, as, a, as an entrepreneur, you're like, oh, because your brain is just going really fast. Um, you know, but, you know, this is a, a great deal. Um, we're definitely, definitely dwelling into the quick rounds now. These are going to be quick questions, quick answers. You ready, sir? Sure. All right. First question. What makes Andrew Kill unique? What is that? differentiating factor that separates you from the next guy or the next girl. You could use the kill team too, if you want. Uh, yeah. So what makes the kill team different uh, is, you know, we're very passionate. We, we love what we do. And we also really try to connect with people, whether it's, you know, one of our tenants in one of our parks or it is our, you know, collections manager, you know, we're, we consider ourselves a family and that's something that differentiates us because it, it helps us when things get tough, you know, we stick together and we have each other's back, whether it's something in business or it's something personal. So that, I think that differentiates us. Awesome. Do you want to put one for Andrew or should we keep going? Say that again. Um, do you for, want to add one for Andrew or do you want to? Yeah. 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 So for myself, I would say I'm, I'm very tenacious and I'm very hungry. You know, I don't come, I didn't come from money. It wasn't like my, my parents, you know, had this, this crystal ball um, and they just, they had made it big. You know, my parents went bankrupt when I was in college. They lost the house that I grew up in. So, you know, I'm, I'm very hungry. I'm very ambitious in my goals. Thank you so much for that. Second question. What was the last book that you read? And what was the one thing that you picked out from that book? Uh, great question. Uh, the last book that I read uh, was actually on the infinite banking concept, uh, IBC. Not sure if you're uh, a fan of that or not, but... I've, I've heard uh, of it. I'm a, a huge fan of infinite banking and, you know, full life cash value life insurance. 
So I definitely recommend, especially for real estate investors, you know, to check out that concept. Uh, Nelson Nash wrote a, wrote a good book uh, on how to become your own banker. So I, I recommend it. Yeah, I, I heard of it where you can still kind of deploy capital, but you still have the capital in your account. It's, it's kind of fascinating. Um, I, I almost had to like unprint to my brain to, to, to get <laughs> that concept. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, final question. Obviously, you're managing the Q team. You're doing amazing deals. Um, of course, you've got your wife and your, your, your baby, your, your, your kid, as you mentioned. What do you do for fun? That's a, that's a great question. I love to uh, surf. So we live about an hour from Cocoa Beach. Uh, my, my good uh, friend and vice president of Keel Team, John Scortino, we go out every Saturday morning and we surf. Uh, that's something we do for fun. Uh, we also work out every day together. So uh, uh, just staying in good shape and you know, going to the beach. Yeah, love it. There's always a strength in partnerships. Um, Andrew, if there's somebody listening, if there's a dual listener listening to our conversation, they're like, wow, I like this, you know, Andrew guy, or maybe I want to invest in one of Andrew's, you know, deals coming up, or I just want to connect with, with Andrew. What is the best place people can reach out to you, get to know you more, connect with you? Yeah, definitely. That would be my website, which is keelteam.com. Uh, I'm sure we'll put that in the show notes. It's just my last name, K-E-E-L-T-E-A-M.com. And feel free to set up and, and schedule a consult with me. I would love to, to chat and help you on your journey. Andrew, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate your time today. Um, I really, really enjoyed our conversation. I'm learning so much more about, you know, mobile home parks. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me.